Ever wondered how to file a case in the High Court? The first step is drafting your petition. This crucial document lays the groundwork for your legal battle and sets the tone for what is to come. It is your narrative, your story, a chance to present your case in the best light possible. Drafting a petition is not just about jotting down a series of events. It's about painting a picture, weaving a story that outlines the facts and legal arguments of your case. The more detailed and accurate your petition, the stronger your case appears. Remember, this document will be the first thing that the judge sees. It's your first impression, and we all know how important first impressions are. The petition, however, is not just about your story. It must also contain the legal basis for your claim. This is where your legal arguments come in. You must articulate the laws or legal principles that support your case. But remember, your legal arguments should not be abstract concepts. They should link back to your facts, showing how the law applies in your specific situation. But who signs this all-important document? It must be signed by the petitioner or their authorized representative. This signature is a declaration that the information contained in the petition is true to the best of your knowledge. It's a stamp of authenticity, a sign of your commitment to the case. Also, don't forget to include supporting documents and annexures. These documents provide evidence to support your claims. They can be anything from photographs to letters to receipts to official records. They add weight to your case, showing that your claims are not just words, but are backed by tangible evidence. So remember, a well-drafted petition is the cornerstone of a successful case. It's your chance to tell your story, to make your case, to persuade the judge that your claims are valid. So take your time, be thorough and detailed, and make sure your petition is as strong as it can be. Once you've drafted a comprehensive petition, you're ready for the next step, filing your case. Now that your petition is ready, it's time to file your case. This is an essential step in the legal process, and it's crucial to get it right. The person initiating the legal proceedings, who could be the plaintiff, petitioner, applicant, defendant, respondent, appellant, or any other party involved in the case, is responsible for presenting all relevant documents at the filing counter of the registry. This includes the plaints, petitions, applications, and the memorandum of appeal. Now, you might be wondering what exactly is the registry? Well, it's the administrative body responsible for maintaining court records. It's here that all your case documents will be officially recorded and stored. The process is fairly straightforward. You present your documents and the officer in charge of the counter endorses the date of receipt on them. This endorsement is critical as it establishes the official timeline of your case. It's the timestamp that validates when your case was filed. And don't worry about losing track of your documents. The officer will return a duplicate copy of the index to you ensuring you have a record of what was filed and when it was filed. This can be immensely helpful as your case progresses, allowing you to keep track of your filings and reference them when necessary. It's important to note that both litigants and advocates can file these documents, either in person or through a duly authorized agent. In today's digital world, you can even file from the comfort of your home or office thanks to the e-filing system. Just make sure you're registered on the e-filing portal if you decide to go this route. In essence, filing your case is the official start of your legal journey. It's when you formally present your arguments to the court and set the wheels of justice in motion. After filing, the court issues a writ of summon. This document serves as a formal invitation to the opposing party, asking them to appear in court and respond to the claims made against them. But we'll delve deeper into that in the next scene. The next steps involve the writ of summon and the pre-admission hearing. Let's start with the writ of summon. This is a formal document issued by the court following the filing of a case. It's an official call to the opposite party, essentially saying, hey, there's a case filed against you. You're required to appear and respond. The writ of summon sets the wheels of justice in motion. It ensures that everyone involved in the case is aware of the proceedings and given a fair chance to present their side of the story. The writ of summon contains critical information such as the details of the case, the parties involved and the date by which the defendant must respond. It's like a formal invitation to a legal duel where the battlefield is the courtroom and the weapons are facts, evidence and legal arguments. Now let's move on to the pre-admission hearing. This stage is a bit like a movie trailer. It gives the judge an overview of the case, 
the issues at hand and the arguments from both sides. The pre-admission hearing is not about deciding who's right or wrong. It's about understanding the case's context and determining whether it warrants a full trial. During the pre-admission hearing, both parties present their arguments concisely. They outline the key points of their case, the laws that apply, and the relief they seek. It's a crucial stage where the judge assesses the case's merits and decides whether to admit it for a full hearing or dismiss it at this early stage. The pre-admission hearing is like a litmus test for cases. It helps filter out frivolous lawsuits and ensures that only cases with substantial legal ground go further. It's a stage where the judge may ask probing questions, clarify doubts and seek additional information, setting the tone for the proceedings that follow. Following the pre-admission hearing, the case moves on to the admission stage. The wheels of justice continue to turn, inching closer to the truth with each rotation. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the next stages of a high court case in the upcoming scenes. The admission stage is critical in the process of filing a case in the high court. After the pre-admission hearing, we move on to this pivotal juncture. Here, the court examines the merits of the case based on the presented documentation and arguments. If the court deems the case valid and worthy of consideration, it admits the case for a detailed hearing. This is a significant milestone as it indicates the court's recognition of the case's potential legitimacy. Once the case is admitted, we transition to the admission hearing. At this point, the court takes a deeper dive into the arguments, evidence and counter-arguments. The parties involved present their respective cases in more detail. They engage in a back and forth, laying out their points and counterpoints, challenging and defending the claims made. This is where the depth and breadth of the legal arguments come to the fore. The court scrutinizes the case from all angles, ensuring a thorough understanding before moving on to the next stage. And finally, we arrive at the final hearing. This is the last stage before the judgment. It's the culmination of all the previous stages, where everything comes together. Here, the court gives the parties one last chance to present their case to clarify any lingering doubts, to address any unresolved issues. It's the final opportunity for the litigants to make their case, to sway the court in their favor. The final hearing is a critical stage, a stage of synthesis and resolution. It's where the court takes all the arguments, all the evidence, all the counter arguments and distills them into a coherent whole. It's where the court makes sense of the complexities navigates the intricacies and arrives at a judgment. This is the stage where the court decides the fate of the case, the stage where justice is served. After the final hearing, we approach the judgment and decree stage. This is where the court delivers its verdict, where the legal battle reaches its conclusion. It's the culmination of the entire legal process, the end result of all the stages that preceded it. It's where the court's decision is announced, where the final outcome of the case is revealed. We've now reached the final stage of filing a case in the High Court, the judgment and decree. This is the moment that all the previous stages have been leading up to. It's the culmination of all the meticulous drafting, the detailed filing, the issuing of the writ of summon, the pre-admission hearing, the admission, the admission hearing, and the final hearing. At this stage, after considering all the facts of the case, the legal arguments presented and the evidence submitted, the judge or a panel of judges will make a determination. This is the judgment. It's the court's official decision on the case and it's legally binding. The judges will articulate their decision in a clear and concise manner, explaining the reasons behind their judgment and the laws they use to reach it. Following the judgment, the court issues a decree. This is the formal expression of the judgment, the final order that puts the judgment into effect. It outlines the rights, liabilities or status of the parties involved in the case. The decree is what brings the case to its official end. But remember, this is a general overview of the process. The exact procedures can vary between high courts. It's important to refer to the specific rules and procedures of the high court where you intend to file your case. Each court might have its own unique requirements and nuances that you need to be aware of. And don't forget, both litigants and advocates can file cases and it's possible to do so from your office or home. The e-filing system offers a convenient online option for filing your case. 
Just make sure you're registered and have your username and password ready. That concludes our guide on how to file a case in the High Court. We hope you found this information useful and wish you the best of luck in your legal endeavors.